Today, the single most powerful military force in the world is the U.S. Navy's Carrier Strike Group, which is capable of performing many missions including strike, maritime and air superiority along with power projection. Because of its prominent role on the world stage, adversaries are continuously looking for ways to disable or deter a carrier. As a result, a carrier is always escorted by ships designed to protect it, from destroyers to cruisers and the occasional submarine. All of these units work in conjunction with each other to form a defensive network to protect the carrier. Yet there is another critical component to this network that often gets overlooked, the EA-18G Growler. The Growler not only provides defensive and reconnaissance data to the carrier strike group, it also provides escort jamming to strike aircraft to and from a target. In many ways, the Growler is at the tip of the spear and the defender of the fleet, while also being able to provide its own offensive capabilities. Built on the combat-proven Super Hornet airframe, today we will take a look at the development of the Growler, the aircraft it replaced, its operational history, what roles it plays today, and some potential future capabilities. The Boeing E-18G Growler is a carrier-based electronic warfare attack aircraft and is a specialized purpose-built variant of the combat-proven Super Hornet. The Growler is the most advanced airborne electronic attack or AEA aircraft and the only one in production today, providing tactical jamming and electronic protection to U.S. military forces and allies around the world. The Growler systems are continuously being upgraded to ensure continued protection to all strike aircraft during high threat missions for decades to come. Let's take a look at the development of the E-18G Growler. Back in November of 2001, Boeing completed successful initial flight trials of a two-seat FA-18F which was fitted with the ALQ-99 electronic warfare system. This demonstrator proved that the Super Hornet could serve as an airborne electronic attack aircraft, but some modifications were needed. Ultimately, the modifications necessary to perform the AEA role were so significant that a new type designation was assigned. Dubbed the EA-18 Growler, the first test aircraft, which was known as EA-1, flew in 2006. The second test aircraft, designated EA-2, flew later in 2006, and after spending time at NAS Paxitan River, both were transferred to the Naval Air Weapons Station, China Lake in California. These initial growlers were operated by VX-23, also known as the Salty Dogs. By 2008, there were five growlers flying in the testing program. In 2009, the EA-18 growler was introduced to the fleet, and has been in service ever since. The growler replaces the venerable EA-6B Prowler, which served with the Navy and Marines up until 2019. The Prowler was an amazing aircraft and will be the subject of its own video. However, the EA-18 Growler has many advantages over its replacement. We'll take a look at those in a moment. But first, here are some specifications for the Boeing E-18G Growler. Length, 60 feet 1.25 inches. Wingspan, 44 feet 8.5 inches. Height, 16 feet. Empty weight, 33,094 pounds. Maximum takeoff weight, 66,000 pounds. Engines, two General Electric F4 and 4 GE 400s, each which produces 14,000 pounds of thrust dry or 22,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. Maximum speed, Mach 1.8 at 40,000 feet. Range, 1,275 nautical miles. Combat range, 390 nautical miles for an interdiction mission. Service ceiling, 50,000 feet. Thrust to weight ratio, 0.93. Speaking of specifications, today's video is brought to you by Magic Spoon. More than just the cereal, Magic Spoon brings you a guilt-free treat that you can have at any time of day. A fifth generation cereal, Magic Spoon has it all. In each serving, you'll get 13 to 14 grams of protein and only 4 net grams of carbs. Magic Spoon cereals also have 0 grams of sugar so you can avoid the danger zone and win the battle of the bulge. Want more? Magic Spoon is gluten free, grain free, and made with only natural flavors. No artificial colors or sweeteners. Great for you, your kids, or your significant other. You could say Magic Spoon has the right stuff. Magic Spoon is available in many flavors. My favorites are Frosty and Cocoa. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. 
So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money. No questions asked. Want to help support this channel and enjoy delicious cereal? Grab a variety pack and try it today. Be sure to use promo code TOG at checkout to get $5 off any order. I'll leave a link in the description below. And now, back to the growler. In order to make room for the electronic suite that controls the ANALQ218 and assists with coordinating the ANALQ99s, the growler removes the 20mm cannon found in the nose. However, there are still 9 hard points, 6 under wing and 3 under the fuselage. With a total capacity of 17,750 pounds for external fuel and ordnance. Typically, the inboard pylons carry 480 gallon fuel tanks, while the midboard pylons can carry the AN ALQ99 high band jamming pods, and outboard pylons are typically reserved for anti radar missiles such as the AGM 88 Harm and the AGM 154 JSAO air to surface missile. Furthermore, two multi-mode conformal fuselage stations can equip air-to-air -air AIM-120 AMRAMs, allowing the Growler to protect itself or prosecute airborne threats. And finally, the centerline fuselage hardpoint can be fitted with an ANALQ-99 low-band jamming pod. The ability to carry both AMRAMs and anti-radiation missiles allows the Growler to perform time-sensitive strike missions in an evolving combat situation. Additionally, the two wingtip missile launcher rails typically used for AIM-9 Sidewinders are replaced with ANALQ-218 detection pods. While carrying limited weapons options compared to the Super Hornet, the Growler's sensor suite is definitely its strong point. The Growler makes use of the AN-APG-79 Actively Electronically Scanned Array or ASA radar, which provides the air crew with a high level of situational awareness. Since this radar is based on an entirely solid state construction, the beam of the ESA radar provides nearly instantaneous tracking updates and multi-target capability. The APG-79 can also operate multiple air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes simultaneously. As mentioned previously, the Growler makes use of the ALQ-99 high and low band tactical jamming pods. Each pod contains jamming transmitters and is powered by a RAM air turbo generator or RAT gen. These pods work together with the wingtip mounted ALQ-218s to form a full spectrum electronic warfare suite that is able to provide detection and jamming against all known surface to air threats. The ALQ-99 can be operated in three primary modes. Automatic, where threats are detected, prioritized, and jammed by the computer system. Semi-automatic, where the operator selects and controls the jammers. And manual, where the operator also identifies and prioritizes the threats. Furthermore, the Growler implements the Northrop Grumman ANALQ-227 Communications Countermeasures Set Electronic Attack Unit, or CCS-EAU, which is an electronic device designed to intercept, process, and jam signals while also determining their direction. The Interface Cancellation System, or INCANS, allows voice communication while jamming enemy communications, a capability which was not available on the Growler's predecessor, the EA-6B. In addition to the radar warning and jamming equipment, the Growler possesses a communications receiver and jamming system that provides suppression and electronic attack against airborne communication threats. The Growler is also fitted with a helmet-mounted queuing system, or HMCS, that provides first look, first shot, high off-bore sight weapons engagement capability. This system enables the pilot to accurately detect or cue the weapons against enemy aircraft while performing maneuvers. The pilot points his or her head at the target and weapons are directed to the target. Aircraft and mission data such as targeting cues and aircraft performance parameters are displayed directly on the pilot's visor. Along with electronic jamming, the Growler provides critical electronic intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance or ISR data to other joint force aircraft, further enhancing its value to the fleet and allies. And since the Growler is built on the Super Hornet airframe, it brings fighter aircraft speed and maneuverability to the electronic attack aircraft platform, something which was lacking in its predecessor, the EA-6 Prowler. The EA-6 served with distinction for decades, and with the retirement of the EF-111 Raven in 1996, was the only dedicated electronic warfare aircraft until the Growler was deployed in 2009. The Prowler leaves a great legacy, but since the Growler shares some 90% commonality with the Super Hornet, maintenance and operational costs have been reduced significantly. The Growler is designed to perform as a support jamming aircraft, which can be tasked with two primary mission types, escort jamming and standoff jamming. 
In the standoff jammer role, the Growler would orbit outside the lethal radius of hostile defenses and jam radar and communications from a distance. In the escort jammer role, the Growler would accompany strike aircraft into hostile airspace and jam acquisition radars and communications from close range. Since the Growler has the speed and maneuverability to keep up with the Carrier Strike Group's Super Hornets, both mission types can be performed as needed. Additionally, as mentioned previously, the Growler can carry weapons to strike air or ground targets on its own if a situation warrants immediate action. Because of this, it is not difficult to see that the Growler can also perform the critical suppression of enemy air defenses or seed role as well. Using its extensive sensor suite, the Growler can also provide critical electronic intel, surveillance and reconnaissance or ISR data to other Joint Force aircraft. All of these capabilities ensure that the Growler can provide advanced survivability and electronic protection to allied ground, air, and maritime forces. There isn't an allied commander that wouldn't want a Growler flying overhead protecting its forces in today's environments. Today, the Growler is in operation with the US Navy and Royal Australian Air Force or RAAF, making Australia the first country ever to be offered the highest level of airborne electronic attack capability by the United States. Some of the Navy squadrons operating the Growler include VAQ-130, the Zappers, which is the oldest electronic warfare squadron in the US Navy, VAQ-134, the Garudas, VAQ-135, the Black Ravens, VAQ-142, the Grey Wolves, and VX-31, the Dust Devils. Interestingly, the US Air Force's 390th Electronic Combat Squadron provides training for Navy Electronic Warfare officers by augmenting VAQ-129 with USAF instructors. Many of the Growler squadrons are based out of NAS Whidbey Island, with deployments spread out among the active carrier battle groups. Australia's Growlers belong to the RAAF's No. 6 Squadron, and make use of the ANASQ-228 targeting pod. The Australian Growlers can also equip the AIM-9X heat-seeking Sidewinder. Electronic warfare is constantly evolving. While the ALQ-99 system has proven effective, there is already work underway for its replacement. Dubbed the Next Generation Jammer or NGJ initiative, the program is looking to make extensive use of ESA radar technology. One ESA application could be to incorporate cyber attack capabilities to insert tailored data streams into remote systems, causing them to be disrupted or disabled. Another proposal is a system which would use six ESA radars for 360 degree coverage around the aircraft. Additional upgrades are already underway. For example, the Growler's ALQ-218 receiver system is receiving the Airborne Electronic Attack System Enhancements modification which will enable growlers to operate in increasingly complex electromagnetic environments. Further improvements in data processing speeds and data links should also allow the growler to perform as a drone controller, which could send lower cost drones to either perform strike missions or set off enemy defenses while the growler remains outside of the engagement zone. In this way, the growler would act as a quarterback or conductor orchestrating an attack or a multi-layer defensive plan. Based on the Super Hornet, the Growler airframe is a proven design which has demonstrated decades of continual carrier operations. Upgrading the electronic suites and sensor platforms will ensure that the Growler continues to play a key role in reconnaissance, deterrence, and escort jamming for strike aircraft for decades to come. The Growler is the most forward deployed protector of the fleet, keeping the carrier strike group safe and ensuring that strike aircraft make it to and return from their targets. What do you think? Is the Growler an underrated aircraft? Will it continue to serve well into this century? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a quick shout out to my patrons and channel members. Your support helps me make videos like these. If you'd like to support this channel, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now you know.